Hello fellow psychology and gamer nerds, my name is Brian Hamilton. Geek Therapeutics has just published a new book called The Psychology of Pokemon, The Power to Catch Em All. In light of this momentous occasion, I figured it would be a good time to talk about Pokemon. This franchise began in 1996 with the release of two games, Pocket Monsters Red and Green for the Nintendo Game Boy. Although both games featured the same plot, players needed to trade and battle monsters with their friends using the Game Link cable to collect all 151 monsters between the two games. In the 25 years that followed, the franchise has added 121 games, 2 television series, 23 movies, 5 miniseries, and 7 Japanese variety shows, not to mention countless merchandise. Let's get into this. Pokemon can be used in a variety of ways to help connect with clients, provide psychoeducation, and to help clients develop social skills. For example, emotional color wheels have long been used as a way to help clients identify their emotions. In this version, developed by Jeffrey Roberts, clients choose an emotion from the center of the wheel that most accurately describes how they're feeling. They then move up to the second tier, choosing an emotion of the same color that is more nuanced. Finally, clients select one of two more emotions in the outermost circle from the same color. In this way, clients can learn to identify the subtleties in their emotions, making it easier to communicate their feelings to others. In a similar way, clinicians can use Pokemon to help clients gain a better understanding of their own emotions. For example, Pokemon often have powers, appearances, backstories, and expressions that correspond well with different feelings. Coughing with its poison gas attack evokes feelings of disgust in its opponents, while Ghastly's ghost-like appearance invokes feelings of fear. Meanwhile, Cubone, wearing the skull of its mother in mourning of her death, can help clients understand feelings of sadness, grief, and loss. Pokemon also frequently undergo three stages of evolution as they develop in power. Pairing their different evolutionary stages with the different tiers of an emotional color wheel can help them understand the power of communicating their feelings in more nuanced ways. Even identifying a client's favorite Pokemon can give clinicians insight about the client. In the Pokemon Origin miniseries, for example, Red chooses Charmander as his starter Pokemon to honor the memory of his father who hoped he would grow up to have the passion of a red-hot fire. In that scene, we learn a lot about Red's ambitions and his approach to the world. Most importantly, we learn about the death of his father and Red's desire to honor his legacy. My favorite Pokemon intervention involves the use of tabletop role-playing games. Converting the powers of the first generation of Pokemon to align with the Hero Kids rule set, I encourage clients to create a trainer that represents the kind of person that they want to be. I then encourage them to select a starter Pokemon that they feel best represents the values of their trainer and a town within the Pokemon universe from which their trainer should originate. Once they have decided on their character, I have the clients tell me what emotions they most struggle with and have them identify a Pokemon that represents that emotion. They then help me create an adventure that involves capturing that particular Pokemon and which involves their emotional struggles. In this way, clients are learning to engage with their emotions, developing social skills, and having fun at the same time. If you are interested in learning more about how you can use Pokemon to help your clients understand challenging psychological concepts, I encourage you to check out The Psychology of Pokemon published by Geek Therapeutics, link in the description below. This book contains a compilation of essays written by clinicians, including one written by yours truly. While you're on their site, check out their other publications, as well as their certification program for therapists interested in using geek culture to help their clients. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of content like this when it uploads, please hit subscribe. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in therapy.